Hello everyone, welcome to the video, Salt here. Today we are going to be going over the Vitrica melee weapon. Now in this uh, weapon series, with ranged weapons in the past, I don't mix these thing with, things with external factors. And I've put off on making a uh, melee build so far because melee builds typically need to prime to get their full uh, effect. Like you don't normally just not prime in a melee build. You usually have to prime in some way. And so I was trying to figure out how to do the format for my, for my melee setup builds. And so what I'm going to be doing <clears throat> from uh, here on out with the melee builds, not the ranged builds, but with the melee builds, is I'm going to have a universal set primer that I use for every melee weapon I test. And it's going to be something that um, is consistent, that takes it off of me. It's just the game doing it for me, basically. And that's going to be my Dirigia build. If you haven't seen this um, build, I do have a separate video on this. So Dirigia primes everything around you with six to eight statuses. So he's a very good um, melee priming pet. The only change I did since that video with my Dirigia is a minor change on his burst laser prime. So if I go to the burst laser prime here, I've started using Saxum Spittle. So before, I used another Augur mod because we get, this one says 40% energy spent on abilities is converted to shields. We were getting 80% um, energy is converted to shields when I was using the other Augur mod in this slot here. But I started using Saxum Spittle because I was, I just kind of realized, I was like, well, with Tenokai now, you actually heavy attack very often. And... Heavy attacks, if you didn't know, those are the attacks that produce the lifted status effect. And so with um, Saxum Spittle, enemies that are lifted, they explode for 20% of their uh, health um, in an 8 meter radius, which is pretty friggin' big. Um, it does have a cooldown of 6 seconds, so it's not, you know, it's not going to like machine gun happen, but it will happen once in a while. Um, using the other Augur mod still is an option, though, because of that cooldown. Like, it's not going to happen super often. So if you wanted to get 80% energy spent on abilities converted to shields, that, that would be fine, too. But that's the only minor change I've made to the uh, Dirigia build. Everything else is the same. And if you like uh, melee priming, I would suggest watching that video. But we're going to be going over the Vitrica. Now, the Vitrica is a melee weapon... And you get it from doing something um, pretty special and unique. I don't want to spoil. Uh, there's not going to be any spoilers. I'm going to be very careful about how I how I say this. But if you're watching here, if you go to the Nora um, Nightwave thing here, you go to Credit Offerings. There's an object called Nihil's Oubliette. And you have to buy that object. And you put it in your orbiter. And then once... It's like once every other week. I don't know if it's random or if it is just straight up like every other week. But every other week, there will be another item available in um, Nora's uh, credit offerings. That's going to be that's going to be called like Enter Nihil's Oubliette or like the Nihil's Oubliette key, something along those lines. And you use that item with the Oubliette that you've placed in your orbiter. So this is a decoration item that you put in your orbiter. Um, I think you can go into dojos too, actually. It's pretty cool. And then you use the key to go inside of it. And that's it. That's all I'm going to say. But that's how you get the Vitrica from doing that. So, let's go into the build. Okay, so interesting things about the Vitrica. The Vitrica is going to glass enemies on... Aim gliding attacks. So when you jump in the air and you attack, you know, you have to aim glide. You hold down right, right click. You aim glide. It's going to glass enemies. I'm actually going to go in the simulacrum here so I could uh, show you guys. Probably should have started this video in the simulacrum. In future melee. Um... Oh, thanks for following, Dancing Dan Singdon 3434GG just followed. In future... Um... 
videos for Melee. I'll probably start it in a simulacrum. This is my first Melee video, so it's going to be a little bit rough compared to uh, like the ranged videos I've done. Because it's going to be easier for me to show you how it glasses enemies um, in the simulacrum. So when you jump in the air and you aim glide and you attack, it's going to shoot like a little uh, thing there. So you see that? Boop. Shoots out. Boop. Shoots out again. Actually, I don't know if you can shoot twice in the seam. Yeah, it has to be a different aim glide. So every aim glide can shoot one of these uh, little attacks. And that attack is going to glass enemies. It's going to stun them. And when you break that glass, it's going to cause 999 damage. Now, that damage is okay early on, but when you're later into Steel Path, it's not really that significant of damage. Um, it does stun enemies for seven seconds. I don't know if I've said that. So seven seconds stun. And the other uh, thing about the Vitrica, and the way you would um, break the glass too, is by doing stun attacks. Hey, Willabum. Nice. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I, I always put like a, a little message out like before. I'm like, hey, I'm going to stream. Um, I'm not the biggest like, you know, streamer or YouTuber. So I usually get like one or two viewers at most. So I appreciate it. <laughs> So um, to break those glassed enemies, any kind of slam attack will do it. So, so sometimes in your uh, stance, they'll just be a regular slam. Let me see. I think the vitri I think in this, uh, yeah, right there. So you see how, how that line went out there? That line is going to um, break glass. So it's going to cause 999 damage. Now... The other way you can do this is by heavy attacking. So if I heavy attack slam on the ground, it causes a larger wave. That's a larger wave that goes further. The smaller wave from the regular stance slam attacks will go 40 meters, and the larger wave will go 80 meters. Um, the smaller wave will produce uh, one combo per enemy hit. The larger wave, I believe, will produce two. I, I'm pretty sure on that. I could be wrong on that one, but I believe the larger wave will produce two. Glassed enemies hit, hit will also produce two. So even though the actual damage output of the glassed enemies is kind of poor, like on Steel Path Endurance, I don't think I would specifically be trying to like, you know, glass enemies and then um, shatter them. Whenever you do like happen to do a uh, slam effect like that, you're going to get some extra um, combo count out of it just because it's going to hit enemies in a line. So let me spawn some enemies and just kind of show you that glass effect. The other thing, too, is any kind of damage will uh, stop the glass effect, which is really bad. Because normally you're going to be attacking a lot. You're going to be putting, like, slash procs, things like that. And anything of that nature is going to uh, to break the – not break the glass, but just stop, stop the glass at all. So there we go. I've just glassed these enemies. They're full of glass. Um, of course, my Dirigia just attacked, so that just broke the glass, even though it was supposed to be for seven seconds. So, but if I glass them and then slam on them, they'll explode for that 999 damage. On Steel Path, it's not really significant damage, unfortunately. But it is cool to know that you can use this as like a little seven second stun. If you need to just, you know, get a stun out, you can just jump in the air and do like a little, a little glass attack there. I just wanted to show that off. It's kind of unique about the Vitrica, the whole like glass thing. A um, little bit niche. It doesn't function. It's a little bit clunky how it functions because damage will actually stop the effect. Uh, the effect itself actually cancels some Warframe CC abilities, which is really shitty. Um, so it's very, very niche, but pretty, but still cool. Okay, so into the mods. All right, so the first two mods we're going to be going for is going to be the Prime Pressure Point for melee damage and Sacrificial Steel for critical chance. Now, Sacrificial Pressure is straight up better than Pressure Point. Pressure Point, um, when Sacrificial Pressure is on, um, because of the set bonus, it goes up a little bit more in melee damage. So Prime Pressure Point will still beat it out. I think Sacrificial Pressure goes up to like 150-ish. So Prime Pressure Point will beat out Sacrificial pressure in flat damage, but it's flat damage. So 15% flat damage is really nothing. But because of the set bonus with sacrificial pressure, sacrificial steel goes up by quite a bit. So 
Sacrificial pressure and sacrificial steel is technically the best way to go. Now, the reason I'm not doing it is because you literally can't fit it without an umbr umbral forma is the unfortunate thing. And umbral formas are very hard to come by. They're very expensive. Um, well, they're not really expensive. They're all time gated, basically. But they're just very hard to come by. And so I think for most people, most people would go with prime pressure point and sacrificial steel. But if you had a lot of umbral formas just lying around for some reason and you didn't know what to do with them, sacrificial pressure would be perfect right here. All right. So that's our flat damage. This is our crit chance. Amalgam Organ Shatter is going to be our crit damage. And the Amalgam mod here also gives you 60% heavy attack windup speed. That's going to help us with our Tenokai because Tenokai is going to um, allow you to just like heavy attack every now and then, which is really nice. So that's why we use the Amalgam version of Organ Shatter. We only lose out on 5% critical damage, which is pretty much nothing. Gladiator Might is going to give us 60% critical damage. And then on the uh, bottom effect here, it's going to give us 10% melee critical chance per combo multiplier. So a little bit more crit chance out of Gladiator Might as well. Condition Overload is going to give us 80% um, melee damage per status type effect in the target. That's going to be perfect because our primer is going to be, our dirigia is going to be applying six to eight status effects, unique status effects on all the enemies around us. So anything we hit is probably going to have six to eight status effects on it. So you're going to get a lot of out of condition overload. Um, then there's also um, later on when we get to the arcane here, there's another arcane that you could use that gives you corro corrosive. So you could be attacking enemies with nine statuses if you want to use that arcane instead. And then condition overload would be even stronger at that point too. Berserker Fury is good for attack speed. That's pretty much our attack speed mod there. This is a pure melee build. And on a pure melee build, Berserker Fury is really good because you're intending to pretty much have your melee out all the time attacking targets. But let's say you wanted to build this for a uh, like a ranged build, but you wanted to have a strong melee weapon um, just like in your back pocket in case, you, in case you needed it, in case like Mania came out and put on Zephyr's Turbulence and you couldn't shoot them. Um, and you needed to melee them down. In that case, Berserker Fury might not be the best because this does need to stack two times. Um, so you would just use like Primed Fury or even Quickening. There's another um, mod called Quickening. But for a pure melee build, you, you can't really beat the 70% attack speed of Fury, of Berserker Fury specifically. Blood Rush for more crit chance per combo multiplier. And Prime Reach for plus three range. There's another option in the Prime Reach slot, and that's going to be... Um, Gladiator Vice. <clears throat> Gladiator Vice is going to give you more attack speed. Am I streaming for three hours? You know, I'm not streaming for three hours. Are there are there drops today? I didn't know there. Were, I guess you know what. I, I guess Dante is coming out today, right? Maybe there are drops today. I could. I mean, I'd be down to stream for three hours. <laughs> I don't normally, but I'd be, uh, but I would be down. <laughs> Um, so Gladiator Vice, you don't really need more attack speed, like Berserker Fury pretty much, uh, has all the attack speed you need, but what Vice does is it gives you more melee critical per combo multiplier. Some people don't really care about running reach, it's just three plus more range, you know, they don't, you know, some people don't really use reach, they just want more damage on, like, the targets. Um, and in that case, Vice could be put in the, the place of uh, Primed Reach. But keep in mind, this build, it is a orange and red crit build. You're not going to be in full reds. With Gladiator Vice, you're still not going to be in full reds. You're going to be in oranges with, with a lot of reds. You're going to be probably mostly reds with some oranges. But you still are in that like orange and red tier, even with Gladiator Vice. And that's why personally me, I'm gonna go with Primed Reach. If Gladiator Vice had put me into full reds, I probably would have used it over Primed Reach, but it doesn't. And that's why I'm not using Gladiator Vice, but it is an option. Especially you have, if you have another external way to get uh, crit chance. For the Arcane, there are multiple good options. So Melee Animosity is like a simple one. You hit something, you get crit chance on your next heavy attack, and it stacks up to 420. So whenever you uh, finally get your Tenokai and you go to heavy attack, bam, you get your 420 crit chance, big boost of damage, and a story. It's basically just free damage with Tenokai. 
Melee exposure is very similar. It's just kind of like free damage. So whenever you cast an ability, you get 60% corrosive damage, and it stacks uh, up to 240%. So you would get corrosive on your weapon, which is a very strong element. For melee, pretty much like corrosive and viral are top tier. Um, so you'd get corrosive, which is one of the top tier elements on your melee. You have to cast an ability every 25 seconds, which is not really an issue. Most Warframes have to cast an ability once every 25 seconds. Um, but if you've watched my videos before, I do these uh, tests without using Warframe abilities. So me, on my videos, I'm not using Warframe abilities, and that's why I'm going for melee animosity. Um, on another Warframe, like if I wasn't doing the video, melee exposure would be tempting for me to pick. I might pick melee exposure over animosity, but they're very close. They're both really, really good. The other top tier one, and, and the one that actually would beat both of these two out in a, in a very um, specific case, is going to be melee retaliation. So on shield frames, so on um, Hildren, Shield Harrow, Shield Protea, um, some revenants like the stack shields, uh, on shield frames, melee retaliation will beat out the other two up here. But of course, I'm doing this on a big dumb Inaro, so we're not gonna have any shields. So those are the three like really, really good ones. Melee influence is really good, but it ha you have to kind of combo wombo with it. You have to, it's a little bit niche. You have to like combo things with it. And same thing with melee vortex. You kind of have to combo with it. And we're not doing that here. So we're not really going to be using those two. So we're just going to be going with melee animosity. Okay. Um, for Tenokai, I'm going to be going with opportunities reach. It's going to enable Tenokai, of course. It's going to increase your uh, window to do your Tenokai to four seconds. You really shouldn't be waiting four seconds to press your middle click button to heavy attack because you're losing out on other opportunities for more Tenokai. Um, so that effect doesn't matter too much. What the effect that we actually care about is it increases the melee range by three meters for Tenokai attacks. And if we remember what I just said, heavy attacks, which are the Tenokai, cause the lifted status. The lifted status is going to take our Saxum Spittle on our Dirigia into effect. The enemy is going to explode and he's going to do 20% of his HP in an AOE around him for 8 meters. So Opportunities Reach is super good uh, with that little kind of combo wombo. If you didn't want to combo um, like that, the other good one and the other like you know simple good one is this one right here. Dreamer's Wrath. So it increases your opportunity window by 50%. So, you know, you don't get a full 40, four seconds, but you'll get like a, like a two and a half, three seconds with Dreamer's Wrath, which again is, is more than enough. You shouldn't be waiting four seconds to press your Tenokai button. Um, but you get some more crit damage also by 32% for Tenokai attack. So that's another just simple damage increase. Oh, my buddy Ace next just said there was going to be an update in a few minutes. Maybe I can get this uh, video done before then. <laughs> uh, for the stance, it's really going to be up to you. Whatever you, you're you're comfortable with. I like Temple Royale. It's a nice mix of, uh, of a few different things. So Cleaving Whirlwind makes you feel like you're a Whirlwind Barbarian from Diablo. But it has a stagger effect on like the fifth whirl. So you can't like forever whirlwind. If you try to forever whirlwind, your, your guy will kind of like stumble around like he's drunk. And that's really annoying. Cleaving whirlwind's also like a little bit slow. Like you, you move kind of slow in that, that animation. Tempo Royale's a little bit quicker and it still has very like wide sweeping effects. Rending Crane is very fast. It actually has really good movement in its animations. Um, but I feel like Tempo Royale has a little bit better um, like arcs and the way it's hitting enemies. So Rending Crane's really good for movement. Cleaving Whirlwind's um, just really good at hitting everything in a 360 because you're spinning around like an idiot. And Temple Royale's kind of in between. So I, I like Temple Royale because of that. But it, it's, it's really up to you, the stance, whatever you feel comfortable using. So, okay. I'm going to be doing a 10-minute Lewis Circulus on Steel Path to show this weapon off, see how it works. Um, we'll see how it does against Trash. We'll see how it does against um, Acolytes. Uh, we'll show off the Dirigia, too. I've already done a Dirigia build in a Dirigia video, but we'll see um, that putting statuses on enemies. So, okay.
Humans have grown fears. Use all that you have learned. Again, you can you can glass these enemies right here and slam on them. Just remember that any damage is going to break that effect. So, like, as soon as a slash ticks, it's going to break the effect. Of course, we don't have our, our combo meter filled up right now. So these guys are going to take a little bit longer. All right. I'm going to cast my four to double my armor, and that'll be the last time I use an ability. Everything else will be the Vitrica. So Saxon Spittle just procced. If you saw a bunch of enemies just kind of fly away, that was Saxon Spittle. And that can only happen every, um, I believe it's six seconds. So with Dirigia, you don't actually need to have a primer because Dirigia is just going to prime everything around you. With a large amount of statuses too, not just, you know, one or two. She's going to do six to eight statuses. I'm going to try, like, as I'm doing this, to kind of mix in the Vitrica's uh, glassing effect. I don't think it's the best, really, but, um, you know, it's, it's interesting, at least. I really do like the range of, uh, I think it's called Opportunity's Range. When you do, do uh, Tenakai, it, it feels like it hits a, a very large area, which is kind of like the whole reason you're using it, because it increases the range. So in the future, when I'm doing these uh, melee videos, I'm... Oh, I accidentally... Heavy attacked without uh, Tenokai, which means I just lost my entire uh, combo count. So in the future, when I do these uh, melee videos, I'm going to be doing it with Dirija. That way there's, um, you know, we can look at one video and then look at another one, and they'll they'll both be equal, the amount of times things are, are primed. You're not hoping that I remember to prime with the Epitaph, like, more in one video than the other. Dirige is just always going to be priming uh, kind of consistently. I just made it. I just heavy attacked again and lost my uh, combo. God damn you. God damn salt. What are you doing? Alright, I'm going to head to the first set of life sports. Try to bring this little group over there. If you chose to, to go with melee exposure, you're also going to get um, corrosive. So you have a potential of getting nine element, nine unique elements on uh, every target. I like the uh, light attacks of this um, weapon, or the stance, I should say. The stance, I like the light attacks of it. The like the static uh, block attack is a little bit slow doing this here, and the forward block attack is it's okay. I just like the um, I like either the uh, forward light or the static light is also pretty nice.
blast that little group of enemies right here and smash them. Oh, there's the update. Five minutes. It doesn't technically kick you out of the uh, the mission, though. So <laughs> my my plan is to uh, do the ten uh, do the ten minutes here, and then uh, go over the build, and then probably save the video there. And I'll keep streaming too. I'll keep streaming um, for the drops if there are any. I didn't know if there were uh, drops today or not. Not entirely sure how that works. I think Warframe itself decides when it wants to do drops, and then whoever is streaming for Warframe, um, as long as it ha as long as they have drops enabled, I believe uh, you can get drops from them. I think that's how it works. I'm not 100 percent sure. All right, so we have Thraxes up. We need to kill the Thraxes quickly. Let's see here. Is gonna really take care of these Thraxes. With corrosive, it might have been uh, a lot better. Damn, Berija, not a good time to go down. All the Thraxes, I think. Are they both dead? Or is one uh, invincible right now? I think they're both dead. I don't remember killing two of them, but I don't see two. Head over the next set of life sports. I think this is the uh, Dante update that's coming out today. So you see how I just glassed a group of enemies and I slammed down on them. That's that's kind of what you would be doing with the Vitrica. That's what you should be doing with the Vitrica. Uh, just that it doesn't have the strongest of effect later into Steel Path.
Well, it's telling me to stay in my mission, so I guess we're going to have to stay in our mission now. We have the second set of Thraxes. Dirigia has decided to go down exactly when Thraxes came out. Which uh, seems about right for him. Only two times he's gone down, right when Thraxes came out. I'm also kind of low on life support here. After we get this guy down, we're probably going to have to sprint uh, 300 meters, which is not going to happen. Uh, 100 meters here, maybe? I think I'll get this one. When violence is up. I'm going to have to sprint to the other two. I know I want to kill you, Thrax, but i got to get these guys because I don't think I'll kill you before the time run or the uh, air runs out. Oh, my goodness. I have a bad map that's not showing me where to go, do I? have to get these two, and then I'm going to have to immediately go back and kill that Thrax, because he's just going to basically suck these uh, two life sports right out. Nope, it decided to, uh, to end it there. Alright, we'll kill this um, Acolyte, and then we'll get out of here. I'm an Aro, so I don't really have to worry too much about uh, life support being gone. So just to uh, mark where we are, though, right now, so we're at 408 kills in uh, 10 minutes of just using the Vitrica, nothing else. No other external factors other than um, Dirigia priming for us. But let's kill this uh, Acolyte, get our Steel Essence, and get out of here. That Tenokai did a lot of damage to him. Yep. Two, two Tenokais killed him, and then a few, like, little hits in between. So, all right. Let's head over to Extraction. We'll go over the build one more time, and then I'll save the video uh, for YouTube. And I'll keep streaming, though. If there if there are uh, drops today, I'll keep streaming. Right, tell me I will be logged out in 15 minutes. That's enough time to go over the Vitrica again. Um, so, yeah, uh, interesting things about this is the, uh, the glass attack. So airborne um, slide attacks, it's like it's aim glide attack. So you hold down, right click, and then you, you press E. You're going to shoot out like a little glass dart-ish kind of thing. And um, it's going to stun for seven seconds. And then any kind of slam attack is going to shatter the glass. Uh, oh, the other thing I didn't mention, and it says it right here, and I, had a, I actually have it on a, uh, a note right in front of me, and I didn't say it is that the Vitrica actually starts with an innate 10-second combo duration instead of 5. So that's a, another really cool thing about the uh, Vitrica. So we're going to have Primed Pressure Point for melee damage, Sacrificial Steel for critical chance. The Sacrificial Set is actually going to be better than Primed Pressure Point. So Sacrificial Pressure 
will beat out prime pressure point and damage, um, not because of the actual melee damage, but because of the in increased critical chance that you get from fa Sacrificial Steel because of the set bonus. The only problem with that setup is that it's very expensive um, because of, well, expensive as far as capacity goes. Um, you need to basically have an umbral forma on this build. And a lot of people, including myself, are not willing to spend umbral formas on melee weapons. So if you didn't want to do that, like me, you would go with Prime Pressure Point instead. It's good enough. It's pretty decent. And that's what you, you'd go with. Amalgam Organ, Organ Shatter is going to give us our crit damage. It's also going to increase our heavy attack windup speed, which is going to uh, just have it be quicker to do uh, your Tenokais. Gladiator Might for crit damage. It's also going to give us a little bit more crit chance per combo multiplier. Condition Overload for 80% um, melee damage per unique status affecting the target. So our Dirigia has the uh, capacity to put six to eight statuses, always six, but sometimes seven or eight statuses on enemies around us. And then if you do go with melee um, exposure, you have the uh, possibility of getting nine unique statuses at that point. So condition overload is very good. Berserker Fury is very good for a pure melee build because you intend to have your melee out all the time attacking. And so you're going to get those two stacks all the time. So... That's going to be 70% attack speed, so that's amazing. Blood Rush is going to give us our crit chance. Um, stacks of combo multiplier. Primed Reach is going to give us that plus three range. The other option you have in that reach slot is going to be Gladiator Vice. Um, the reason I'm not using Vice is because with Primed Reach, you are orange and red crits. And with Gladiator Vice, you're still orange and red crits. You're a little bit more red crits, but you're still orange and red crits. And so... That's why I'm not going to go with Gladiator Vice. If you had an external way to produce a little bit more crit chance, Gladiator Vice could possibly get you into full red crits. And in that case, I probably would use it over Prime Breach. Um, but in this case, I'm not going to be using it. For the Arcane, Melee Animosity is an easy, just more damage here and there from Tenokai. Melee Exposure is amazing, but it requires you to cast an ability every 25 seconds. Most Warframes can do that. It's just that on my videos, I don't use abilities um, when I'm testing weapons. So I'm not using Melee Exposure because of that. A melee Exposure is very strong. Corrosive is an, is an amazing ability, especially on melee weapons. Um, on a regular build, if I wasn't doing this video, it would be hard for me to pass up on melee exposure. I would probably be using melee exposure. Um, the only ones that are going to beat these two out, though, are going to be, it's going to be melee retaliation with shield frames. So Hildren, Shield Harrow, Shield Protea, uh, I think some Revenants use a lot of shields. Melee retaliation would be really, really good on shield frames. Melee influence and melee vortex are both really good, but they you need to kind of combo wombo with them a little bit more. They require a little bit more setup. You, know, you need to have electric um, uh, attacks for this one. You need to have magnetic for this one. Uh, but they, they have the potential to be very strong with kind of like a combo wombo. So that's the Arcanes. For Tenokai, I'm going to be going with Opportunities Reach. It increases uh, your Tenokai Opportunity Window by four seconds. We don't really care about that because you, you should be clicking your Tenokai way quicker than every four seconds. If you're waiting a full four seconds, you're missing out on other potential Tenokais. Um, but we're choosing it for the second effect. So it increases our melee range by three meters for Tenokai attacks. So our Tenokai, when we go to do that attack, it's going to um, reach further and it's going to produce more lifted enemies. And lifted enemies are going to um, explode when we kill them and do 20%, 10% if you if you don't have another um, Saxon mod. But they're going to produce, let's just say 10%, 10% of their HP as explosive damage. Um, impact, actually. Impact damage, not explosive. So that's why we use Opportunities Reach. Tempo Royale is what I like for my stance. But you can choose whatever you like as a stance. That's more of like a personal thing. Whatever you, you feel uh, you like better. Just remember that with the Vitrica, any kind of slam attack creates that like wave of energy that will, it does two things. It'll break enemies that are glassed and it will also produce one combo count per enemy hit. So 
depending on your stance, certain stances have that like slam attack in different like areas of the combo. So I like Temple Royale myself, but you might like Leaving Whirlwind. You might like Renny Crane. So choose whatever you feel comfortable with. And that's pretty much it for the Vitrica. This is the first time I was doing a melee video. I do a lot of ranged. I was kind of um, afraid to do a melee because I wasn't sure how I was going to do the format because I normally don't like to mix things in my videos with external factors. But in Melee's case, most of the time people are priming. And so it was hard for me to make an end game build, like acting as if I wasn't going to prime because it, it just wouldn't make sense. And so I think using Dirigia as like a baseline primer is, is just a good thing for these videos. So that is the Vitrica. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, give it a like. And I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. I'm going to end the uh, video here for YouTube, and I'm going to continue uh, streaming. Although I might have to, like, restart my game probably. So I might have to, like, take a quick, like, five minute and then come back. So, all right. I'll be right back.